All right, I am Mastery Academy. It's good to have you back. It is now day four of your boot camp. Hopefully you guys got a lot of notes and got to rewatch the last few days. Uh, day four now, we're halfway there, over halfway there. We have uh, made some great strides and today I expect nothing less in uh, the RSI. So as you can see on the flyer, if you guys saw the flyer that was circulating around today is all about the RSI. And it's all about understanding price strength and it's understanding what the market is actually doing um, before it actually makes its move. And that's what we're going to teach tonight. We're going to teach the basics of what the RSI means. And then we're going to move into advanced RSI techniques. Uh, whether you're using DeLorean, I'll show you a little bit about it on DeLorean. Or we'll go over to TradingView today as well and we'll explain it. And we call it the RSI sequence. And so later on in today's uh, session we will discuss what that means. But we're going to start by just discussing the RSI because everybody that has DeLorean on here is probably able to see that there's some purple lines going on under your chart. Whatever chart you're on on the right side, I just picked a random pair for uh, the sake of, of demonstration here. But whatever chart you have on the right side is, is clickable and, and it's going to have an RSI. So the RSI, first thing before we get into it, let's let's explain what that is and that stands for a a relative strength index okay and and really you just got to think about the words relative strength relatively speaking how strong is something and so here is here is the beginning of all of this you notice that you have this purple shaded region this purple shaded region is what i like to in my and this is in Patrick's terms, I like to call this the normal region. Okay, you can call it really whatever you want, the middle region, normal region, I don't care what you call it, but we'll just call that the normal region for now. Anywhere that is shaded in purple, we call that the normal region. And by the way, I guess I did something that some of you guys maybe didn't realize you could do. If you click the up and down arrow here uh, on any DeLorean pair, it says toggle maximum pain when you click that it'll it'll open it up so that it becomes large and you can do a lot more analysis with it if you need it and by the way we're going to learn how to use it for analysis today so you're going to need this in the future so you have this purple shaded region and that's the normal region and on the right side i want you to notice that you basically have zero to a hundred you have negative numbers but you're not really dealing with negative numbers here, but you see the 100 up here. And I'm sure you guys all notice the zero down here. I'm just looking at these numbers on the right side. Okay. Now, as you can see, where does the chart predominantly sit? Well, the chart typically jumps up and down from the 70 to the 30. And that's what we have it set as the standard. And you guys have learned in other live sessions from me, and if you haven't, you can free, feel free to go back and watch them. But you guys have learned that you can change these settings at any point in time by just right-clicking, uh, going to Properties, if I can get it to go to Properties today. It's not looking like it's going to work. There we go. All right, come on. Let's get that to work. Properties. And then, of course, in Properties, you can change tons of things. Uh, such as the margins, you can change the background, you can change the time sessions, all that sort of stuff. But when we talk about these numbers, the 70 and the 30, we'll talk more about that in a little bit in terms of the settings uh, in, in TradingView. But again, when, when you're doing that, and by the way, again, I, I, all I did to go there was right click and uh, go down to properties to make any sort of adjustment that I would like. But to begin, let's just talk about the general areas. This is the relative strength index. We've got the normal area. Now, as a market comes down, I want you to think to yourself for a minute. When you see a pair, a currency pair, a stock, anything, when you see it dropping, what are most people thinking of doing when they see it dropping? They are thinking of buying it. Anytime you see a currency pair rallying, what do people usually think of, of doing when it's going up, 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 up? They're thinking, how can I sell this? And really, that, that, that is a great segue to the beginning of the session, you know, to think about when I first started trading. 
when I first started trading, any time the market was dropping, I was trying to think on how I could buy it. I don't know about you guys, but any single time the market was rallying, I was trying to think, how can I sell it? I never thought in my head, logically, oh, this could continue. Everybody is always trying to do something called what I like to call catching the falling knife. And unless you're stuck in a, a severe economic situation, say a company takes a massive hit due to something, whether it's an economic event or a pandemic, for instance, you know, we're all going through that and have all been through that. Uh, you know, all these sort of things. Yeah, there's situations where something might take a massive hit in value and there's a great investment opportunity. But for day traders, for us that are trading on the 15 minute, the falling knife syndrome is a real thing. The RSI is going to help us with that because you might be in a place where the RSI is telling you, don't do it, don't do it, but you didn't even realize it because you hadn't used it prior. So when we look at this, the bottom outside of that purple stands for oversold. This area outside of the purple is oversold. We go up top, this is overbought. Okay, so you see that we have just two regions, or I'm sorry, three regions, normal, oversold, overbought. And all we have to do is simply take a look at where this purple line is to understand where the market is. So specifically, there's two regions that I notice right here. Anybody notice what's going on there? Anybody notice any discrepancies? Actually, you could technically say right here too, very little. What do you notice? Well, that purple line just heads into the white. It exits that purple shaded area. That means it's exiting the normal region and it's heading into an overbought scenario. The RSI is telling us that the market around this area is starting to become overbought and a pullback is potentially coming. Keyword potentially. By no means does this mean right when you see this to sell it or when it's down here, buy it. That's not what I'm saying. It's an alert. It's a nudge. It's a forewarning that the market could begin to reverse. And why do I share this? Well, at, at its whole, at first, let's discuss if the market is up here. So if the market, oops, sorry guys, if the market is up on top, would you guys guess that you should be looking for alerts to buy or sell when you see the RSI here via DeLore DeLorean? Should you be looking to buy or sell when the market is above the purple region? Well, intuitively speaking, we should be looking to sell. A lot of you guys mentioning that. And that's great. You're thinking ahead. Now, here's the thing. Let's look at it here. If we look, this right here at this level is where it first pinched out. That's right there, right in this area. I want you to look at that really quick and say, okay, what if I, what if I did sell it? You're at 1.0983. Price got down to 1.0971. It's 12 pips. Obviously, I don't think anybody's excited about that in terms of, and an alert wouldn't happen anyway. DeLorean would never send an alert here, but I'm just saying for practical purposes, this is what you're dealing with. Okay, the reason I say that is just to make sure everybody understands that this is not to be taken as a strategy. We don't just sell it right here. And then notice it happened again over here. We don't just sell it when that happens. Why do we have this? It's here because we are looking at zones. You are trying to understand, generally speaking, where are we at certain times. You don't want, you're basically thinking the opposite. It's not saying sell it. It's saying, in this case, the way we use DeLorean, when you see this, you don't want to buy it. You don't want to buy it. You don't want to buy it. And we can scroll back. You don't want to buy it. You don't want to buy it. You don't want to sell it. 
So notice what I'm saying. I'm not saying to buy it here and sell it here. I'm saying stay out of the market at that time for that direction. So with that said, when you're looking at your chart, this is what it's going to look like in a, from a standard sort of viewpoint. Okay, this is what the index is going to look like. Normal, overbought, oversold. So now you know that when you're getting bullish DeLorean, if, if you're up here and you get a, bu a bullish, meaning a blue arrow, DeLorean alert, I just said a second ago, you don't want to what? You don't want to buy it. On top of your four-step check process, you want to look at these sort of things and recognize where you are in a pattern. Notice, I'm not, we're not even talking four-step right now. Let's just talk about where the arrow sits. The arrow for a blue alert was right here. Here's the RSI. We're in the normal zone. The RSI is not anything to panic over here. We're good to go in this case, in this example, right where this alert happened. Okay, But if there was a DeLorean alert up here, we don't want to take that trade at that point in time. We want to wait for a pullback because this is signaling to us that eventually we're going to have some sort of correction coming a little bit. And typically this, ha this sort of behavior happens. Notice where, where does it happen? It happened here, here, and here. Does anybody notice the characteristics of when that happened? Well, look right here. Look right here. Look at the volume and look at the speed in which this came. Right here. Look at the speed. Look at all the blue. Look at all the blue. Okay, they come after volume spikes. They come after there's a ton of liquidity and a massive run, whether it's up or down, bullish or bearish, in the market. So when we scroll back, remember we had one example to the other side, but here's another example. It came after a massive spike. There's almost always pullbacks after massive spikes. That's why when you see these, this crash down, look at this. Volume, pullback. It's not registering on the RSI. But after massive moves, pullbacks come. Notice here. Right there. Massive spike to the downside comes back up. Okay. So that's the beginning, beginner side. I got to give you a little bit of a prereq to what we're going to get into today. But for the first 15 minutes here, I just wanted to give you guys, a, a, I guess, the prerequisite to what I need to talk about today, which is the advanced RSI sequence technique of understanding if we're even going to be in an okay scenario in the market. This will involve two things. Understanding the RSI and, and actually understanding how to draw a trend line. So that leads me to my second prerequisite before we get involved today, which is how to draw a trend line. And some of you guys have been through some of my material before on how to do this. And again, like I said, the boot camp is not designed to give you guys the 101 or the prerequisite. Boot camp is advanced. Boot camp is you're, you're heading towards graduation, if you will. And so, understand, in the academy, we have so much material, 100 level, 200 level, all the way to 500 level material, that I want you guys to watch really before you even go through any of this. So make sure you're getting through that sort of stuff. But before we get into our stuff today, you need to know how to draw a trend line. And it's very simple. When you're drawing your trend lines, obviously over here on DeLorean, you can get an arrow or a trend line, either line you want to use. Or technically, you could use an extended or array. You can really use a bunch of these options. But when you're drawing, I want you to focus on drawing from the wicks. So notice how this blue line here starts down here. Notice how it starts right on the wick. Okay. Notice up here. Notice how it just hits the bottom of the wick. We're not cutting through anything. We're not cutting through bodies. None of that. It is a wick-to-wick -wick scenario. Now, why did I draw a line? Why would I have drawn this? Well, we're going to go through a few examples about this, but whenever you guys see a market, obviously now coming together here, boot camp is starting to really all seamlessly come together. What's the trend? Don't forget what we talked about yesterday. 
What's the trend? Not, don't look at this trend line. Look at the trend. You might say, well, how do I to know? Well, go back to day three of the boot camp. Remember, aqua over gray. Okay, we have a bullish trend. Does anybody in this room ever run into a situation where they see a bullish trend and the first thing they think is, oh, I, when is it going to end, though? You start to worry that the bullish trend might end or something of that nature. See, that happens all the time. And what I'm about to teach you is a way to begin to get hints, not guarantees again, but presumptive hints that you are headed into a true pullback and that what you're about to uh, uh, incur or, or go through is a serious pullback. And so how I do that, first things first, is drawing a trend line. So I drew a trend line here. All right, I drew it from point one here to the second point here. My box is just the same as yesterday, or not working still for some reason. There we go, the two points. Now I want to highlight those two points down here on the RSI. I want you to notice that I found the low here, okay, of this point, and I drew it to the RSI low. Okay. So we have point one, point two, point one, point two. At the initial glimpse from you guys seeing this, it might look perfect. You're like, okay, yep, we got two points. They look very similar. And they are. They really are. But here's the thing. What you want to focus on now is looking at this trend line as your real support. Meaning, ignore the price on the screen. Now we can't see the price on screen, so now you guys can't cheat. Where does the market break this bullish trend? Obviously, you guys are not going to really have a very easy time typing this in the comments. But where does it break the bullish trend? That's my question to you guys. Well, you follow the trend line up. Let's uh, get a vertical line. You follow it up. Okay, it comes up, up, up. Doesn't go here. Doesn't go here. Taps here. Bingo, right there. Breaks right there. Just made a little vertical line to show you. So at this point in time, right there, we break that bullish RSI sequence trend line. Now let me let me go down here and I'm just going to match the vertical line tool up. Okay. Does anybody see anything interesting here? Well, what I want to hopefully have you seen, if you don't, we're going to use another example. But when you draw this trend line, what, what are you going to start drawing your trend lines when you guys start doing this? I want you to notice something. The RSI broke here. Okay. The trend line didn't really break till there. In this case, 15 minute, we've got one, two, three, four. The RSI hinted an hour early, there's the difference right there, full line all the way down. The RSI hinted an hour early at what was to come of the break. The reason I tell you this is when you get now scenarios saying to buy it and you already have the foreshadow of break, you can tell me now that you're more confident in knowing what the direction of the market is and you're probably more safe in taking those trades. Now with that said, let's let's just go over here to a different example. I said we would I would show you guys on both uh, whether you're using TradingView or DeLorean because I know everybody likes to switch back and forth as do I and that's totally just fine. But let's now talk about TradingView. So notice on the bottom here in this example I've got the 80-20 rule in place. So remember I said earlier that if you guys get on TradingView, you can actually change your settings of the top and the bottom band of the RSI to 80-20 instead of 70-30. You don't have to do this, but I do this because in reality, the 80-20 rule is much more predictable 
in terms of breakouts. I want you guys just to take a look here. If I were to zoom out on this chart, in this example here, just in this picture, how many times did we break out? Well, we broke out one right here and two right in here. Okay. And I like my odds a lot better of not getting thrown off by the RSI versus 70-30. Oh man, what's going on here? I don't know why this is not pulling up now. Anyway, versus 70-30 when you're breaking out a lot more. And what I mean by that is look where 70 is. Okay, it's not perfect, but I'm just marking these real quick. Just look where 70 is and look where 30 is. How many more times did it break out? One, two, three, four, stayed under, five, six, seven, eight, nine, you know, like 10 times. And granted, yeah, it, it gave us good regions where this market kind of got choppy, and that's good. The 80-20, the however, is much more predictable in terms of really catching the obvious areas where we should not be buying or selling. Now, all that was a, a complete digression from what I was trying to talk about, but it's important because now let's talk about the RSI sequence. So let's pretend you're trading this here, whether it's hindsight or future, it doesn't matter. Let's just pretend we're trading this area right here. You're trying to figure out when you're gonna trade it or maybe you're already in long, whatever you are, it doesn't matter. Let's just draw, okay, this trend line. So let's say you're drawing this trend line and I don't know, here's a level of resistance. And let's say the moment that you broke out of that level of resistance, you wanted to buy it on a retest. So it retested right here and you wanted to buy it. Or maybe you had a DeLorean trade or, or maybe you had a different strategy. The point is, let's pretend for all intents and purposes that you went long on this example. You bought it. So here's our starting point, the wick, okay, wick, and it goes up and you can see at this point it broke, okay? All right, perfect. Well, now what I want to do is I want to bring up that same point here and then go over to these points here. Just like so, okay? And I want you to take a look again. Where did it break it? Broke it down in here. Okay, now I just showed you two examples that were giving us, in this case, this is four hour chart. So this is giving us a little bit more of a heads up, if you will, than the 15 minute was. One candle here is four hours. But again, on all of these trades, you have to watch these areas. Okay, we could go to this trend line. Same trade example. Okay, draw the trend line. Follow the same points. Start here, point two is here. Okay. And again, you guys should start to see that the market didn't break till here. Okay, notice right here where my crosshair is, the market didn't break till there. On the RSI, that's right here. Well under. Okay, we are already broken. Notice where we broke. Look at my cursor. 
we broke right in here. Okay. So granted, we were way above the trend line from the candle, from the charts, from the candles. Way above. I mean, I guess the word way is a vague term, but in relatively speaking from a visual perspective, we're up here. But on the RSI, we're cracking down and we're starting to test it and break it. It's foreshadowing for us that we may see a little bit of pressure coming on the opposite direction. Now using trend lines on RSI is not anything new and it's, it's not a brand new strategy by any means and I've been doing it for a long time. But for some of you guys it may be new and what I call this is the RSI sequence. And the reason that I utilize the RSI sequence is it tries, it, it, it helps me to find situations in the market that maybe I'm running in a position in profit that I need to get out of. Or maybe for instance, in this case, maybe I, maybe I don't like Aussie dollar to the upside and I want to sell it for some reason. And instead of waiting for, you know, a, a break and a retest, all I need to do now is wait for a break because I've already seen the break on the RSI several candles before. It's foreshadowing. Again, the RSI sequence is designed to foreshadow so when you guys are in these DeLorean setups and you guys are taking a look at these trades following trend lines, you're not in the wrong position. Again, the way that I utilize my verbiage, instead of saying sell up here, I say please don't buy. By no means am I selling because when you're at an RSI level of overbought, you are most likely in a bullish market at that time. And when you are at an RSI level of oversold, you are most likely in a bearish market at that time. Why? Because if you weren't, you wouldn't be at the overbought level or the oversold level. So as you grab all of these, it, it, again, it doesn't matter. Oops. As you grab these, notice that the RSI is on the bottom. And again, your goal is to, when possible, when possible, draw it. So for instance, here's another example. Now remember, how do we draw a trend line? Wick to wick. So we can't, some of you might think that's how you properly draw this trend line right there, how it sits. Notice we're cutting through some wicks. I take into account all wicks which in this example is right here. That's the wick, right there, okay? So granted, we've stayed below right here, this trend line, and when we draw the same trend line on the bottom here, okay, notice that we actually broke out of it right in here. Okay, understand that it broke out in here too, which the little pullback ensued. Alright, but we didn't break out to the top till in here. But again, it's all foreshadowing. This is not a trading strategy in terms of an entry and exit. It's foreshadowing. Let's look at where it broke. Approximately right here. You could go one candle forward if you like. But regardless, look at where that RSI break occurred down here if you were short from a DeLorean setup up in here which by the way there is one it looks like there is one I'm not sure I'd have to zoom in but if you were short for instance up in here there definitely is a few DeLorean setups in here this would have told you way down in here that the market was at least in some trouble as it breaks back above and then boom the market heads back up it's a foreshadowing mechanism it's helping us to remember where the market can go all right so let's go over here let's type in Bitcoin 
everybody's heard of Bitcoin, whether you trade it or not, that's totally up to you. But let's go to, for instance, a daily chart of Bitcoin. By the way, I'm doing this on, the, on a rip. I've no, I have not uh, done this. I don't know what just happened. Oh, let's get, let's use Coinbase. There we go. So let's take a look at this. Okay. Trend line, trend line. Let's just start drawing. Okay, here's that peak. Here's the second peak. Okay. Here we are. This is on Bitcoin. Now, I'm not trying to predict any trades for you guys right now. But what I am telling you is that the RSI right now, that red line you see, okay, that red line that you guys see here, that's the trend line. Are we broken? Yeah, we, we, we are. We're on top of it. But notice on the bottom, we're not. What is that telling us? The RSI is foreshadowing that we will do what? What's the RSI foreshadowing here? That we will break this line and head higher. And for those of you guys that follow Bitcoin, obviously having is coming up soon. If you don't know what having means, it's a detriment to miners, Bitcoin miners. It, it there's it's Bitcoin is, is a lot to me like like you look at it like gold in in terms of scarcity. Having makes it more scarce, which of course less supply circulating uh, potentially increase uh, less supply will potentially increase price obviously. But then when less supply comes in, then it gets new demand in place, and you may see a market rally. The reason I bring all of this up is this market has a good chance of rallying and we're just seeing it off of the RSI perspective. Now this is a high time frame but that doesn't mean that it can only be used on a high time frame. You can use this on anything you want. We can go to a 15 minute time frame and you can use it on both directions. For instance we could go here say over to here okay that's the bottom on the 15 minute. Remember, lower time frames are not going to be as accurate as, as you guys probably already imagine. Throw it in. Okay, we get a break. We get a break of the line right there. What is that foreshadowing? The market's probably going to have a little bit of trouble and drop, and it, it drops just a hair, not, not much, right there. You could also look at the high side. It's probably better to look at right now because that's breaking to the upside, which is where the volatility sits. And you guys can probably see right now that there's a clear trend line indication that happened there that ended up breaking. So if we look at that, this is the high. This is the second high. Where are we at? Right here. all the way over okay you'll notice in this case the market broke this high and rallied out okay and this is the reason that and then I bring this up not to contradict myself but I bring this up to say again that this is to help us fores foreshadow this is not entry techniques this is a sharpening of the axe, if you will. This is helping us get extra arsenal. Okay, so in this case, it didn't foreshadow the break to the upside. Now, it broke to the upside here, finally, which gives us plenty of, you know, plenty of hope and, and whatever, if, if we're bullish, say, on Bitcoin. You guys know I don't trade crypto. But, nevertheless, the reason I bring all of this up is, again, to try to put you guys in, pl in a place where you can have more to your arsenal. So now, what I want you to think about is when you get on a chart like this one, 
Now, what are you equipped with? I want you to think back. This boot camp, you know, I've, I've put a lot of value in, in, or I've tried to put a lot of value into this boot camp, and I've put a lot of effort, and I've actually, believe it or not, put a lot of money into the boot camp. And that's why I'm trying to make it multilingual, and we have the, you know, Spanish subtitles, all these sort of things, so that as many people can learn as possible. And when we talk about what we have learned, I want you to think for a second the logical way to maneuver the boot camp. The boot camp's order isn't how you should analyze a trade. But how you should analyze a trade every single time is first things first. When you get an alert, you follow your four-step check process. That's the first thing you do. You make sure, without a doubt, that at least at minimum the four-step check process passes. After that, you take a look at the aqua and the gray. What is your trend? Then you look at the arrow. Are you in a counter trend situation? Are you with the trend or not? As we talked about yesterday, are we near the zones? Here's an example. If we would have talked about this example on screen yesterday, we would have liked this example in terms of placement. Why? Aqua is above gray, meaning we're looking for blue arrows if we can, and we're near the aqua. Remember, if you can trade on these key color levels, aqua, gray, blue, you're going to have more success. It's very apparent just right here. The market comes down, hits the blue, rallies out of it, never comes back. The market comes down near the aqua, rallies. Comes down near the aqua and starts having trouble and looking to rally again. Okay. After that, you got to ask yourself, is this a type 1 or a type 2 trade? Remember, a type 2 trade is when all three colors, aqua, gray, and blue, are above or below you. A type 1 trade is when you're in, the arrow is in between any of them. It could be under one and uh, under one, um, and the, and then above the other two, or vice versa for a type one. Then, last but not least, the most important, which I hope day two got to you a lot, is coming together now. Risk reward ratio needs to be minimum one to two, and your maximum risk on a trade is two minutes, or is that two minutes, two percent. That's your goal. That is your goal. At the end of the day, if you can follow that and then start to couple these little tricks, looking at the RSI, seeing where the volume is, you're going to start to get much better. Much better. Okay? Now, where else does this work? Well, you guys know I trade US 30 every single morning without exception. Okay, If there is a possible trade, you guys know that I take it with you every morning. I enjoy doing that. And you guys enjoy it as well because we're in and out of these trades within 20 minutes at the most. And so when we talk about the US 30 situation, we're always trading on the one minute, remember? Okay. And so when we're trading on the one minute, we could get our zones again. Let's say we have a bottom here. Let's say we have a top here. Okay. And of course, you guys know all I do is trade these breakouts, just little breakouts. And 100 pips on US 30 is very easy. It takes five minutes to gain. And we're literally targeting 100 to 200 pips per trade. Not much for US 30 but a lot in retrospect to a lot of the trades that we're taking. Okay? So what, what, am, I, what am I meaning? Well, if you use the 80-20 rule, you just want to make sure, that's what the boot camp's about, all this bonus training, you just want to make sure, man, you can tell I don't use the Mac a lot. So right here, this is our sell area, right? As always, you guys probably recognize this from a morning in the live room. And I always mark these up and I say we, we trade the breaks. 
we look for a breakout on these, what I like to call, I have a fun name for them, called corridors. The green is not take profit. The green is if the market breaks this high, we buy it. If it breaks this low, we sell it. But here's the caveat now. Adding the RSI, you should have more of an arsenal. So what do I mean? If you are looking right here at this break, okay, imagine now that you have the RSI. Here is the RSI, down here, here is the break. Now, if the RSI is below the 20, then do you think you want to trade that break? Absolutely not. The answer is no, right? Why is that? Because we are already oversold. So remember what I just talked about. This is not meaning when it's down here to buy it. This means don't sell it. So remember, in this case, let's say, for instance, if I were to zoom out and it's going to be tough right here can't do it here but for instance right here we had a break scenario happening right in here notice the rsi below here right down here the reason that i bring this all up the reason that this is here is in this case in a in a monday morning a wednesday morning a thursday whatever day it is and we see a break such as right here we don't sell it if the RSI is already outside of the purple. And, and I use the 80-20, as you guys know. I like to use the 80-20. Okay. Now, if you were, you were to use the 80 or the 70-30, you would probably almost never get a trade, just so you guys are aware. And the reason that I say that, actually, I'll do this for visual purposes again. Let me just show you guys. Here's about 70. Here's about 30. So in this example here that I just showed you, if I zoom in here, it broke. It broke right here. We had already broken once. That would have already been scaring you if you were a 70-30 type of person. So you want to use the 80-20 for these because it's, it's your, your safety mechanism in terms of not making a bad decision. But remember, the reason we're trading these in the specific time we're trading them is when the market goes, it goes. That's what I always like to say. This is in the morning time when we trade this, obviously not right now, but in the morning time when we trade this, again, when the market goes, it goes. And the, what I mean by that is in the morning after the market opens, there is enough volume pent up that it's deciding what direction it's gonna push for the day. And you know, technical factors come in, fundamental factors come in, everything is coming into play here. But when it goes, it goes, and we've ridden those waves. And we're just using this as a safety net, a safety mechanism, if you will, to avoid making a bad decision. If it's above the 80 or below the, the 20 on the, in this case, on the US 30. So I gave you a couple different ways that I use this, and this is what I pay attention to when I'm trading with the RSI. And again, your success comes from coupling it with the rest of what you've learned. Your success does not come from just trading this and just come from looking at this. Your success comes from coupling this with other things, mixing this together with other elements of your trading strategy to get better and to, to get better warning signs of, of the good and the bad that is about to come on your account, on your position, so on and so forth, okay? So with that said, flood the chat with some ones. How are you guys feeling so far? Uh, again, I, I say this every day, but how are you guys feeling so far about boot camp? Do you feel like it's been worthwhile? How are you guys enjoying your boot camp? This has been uh, something I've wanted to do for a while, and and obviously I'm, you know, you might be watching this on recording or not. Whoever's watching this live, thank you. But if you're watching this on recording, you know this is being recorded when we're in this whole pandemic thing. We're still in lockdown, all that sort of stuff. And um, you know, I'd planned on having a boot camp done for the public in person events that sort of stuff but i couldn't and so i wanted to bring it online and i'm actually excited that i did because i'm able to reach more of you guys different languages all that sort of stuff and of course it's being recorded so that you guys can watch it over and over and over again so with that said guys flood the chat if you got some value tonight again out of day four of your boot camp this is advanced rsi techniques I hope you guys enjoyed these techniques. These are just little things that I use 
to add on. This is a very advanced series, this boot camp, but these are things that I don't spend a lot of time talking about because I think I take for granted education in, in, in terms of teaching it because we trade so much live. I don't teach you guys as much. And this boot camp is back here to teach, teach, teach. And that's why we spent this whole week forgetting about trading and just teaching and just learning and, and, and figuring out what we need to do to sharpen the axe. So with that said, guys, this is day four. This wraps up day four. But before you go, understand tomorrow is day five, 8 p.m. Eastern. Day five, if you're going to be here live, 8 p.m. Eastern. Day five, same spot, same place, same time. We're going to talk about the mindset. We're going to talk about the mindset. We're going to talk about what it takes to become a successful trader, a prosperous trader, somebody that really does well. We won't even mention money right now, just somebody that does well. And I'll talk a little bit about my story for the first time for a lot of you guys that have probably heard it and what it took for me to get over that slump, to get over that edge and to really excel as a trader, as an investor, and overall do better in all endeavors. So with that said, I hope you guys enjoyed this. Have a great rest of your evening, and I will see you guys. I want you guys to pack it out. Remind your teams tomorrow, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Again, tomorrow, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We're going over mindset. All right, guys. God bless. See you back here tomorrow.